about two weeks ago, I went on YouTube and I made a video about the Miami Heat and I practically told everyone why the Miami Heat are a scarier team than you think. There were so many people and I tell you so many people overreacting to the start of the season saying the Miami Heat are done now, that their team isn't strong enough to compete with the other teams like the Celtics. Well, all these statements are wrong because the Miami Heat are currently on a seven game win streak and they just got a huge victory against the brooklyn nets so in today's video we're going to be talking about the three players on the miami heat that have been stepping up recently and i've contributed to the seven game win streak but if you guys are new man absolutely demolish the like button until your phone stops working and make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel let's get right on to the first player that stands out on the miami heat and this has to be duncan robinson you know last season he wasn't shooting too well he was only averaging about seven points and now this season he's averaging a crazy 14.3 points per game 2.8 rebounds and 2.4 assists per game so duncan robinson is averaging a career high in points right now and you may be asking how is all this happening well it's one big factor and this is duncan robinson's increase in finishing this guy is getting so much better at going at the rim especially doing a lot of pick and rolls with bam out of bio so let me show you some film on how duncan robinson gets at the rim on this play duncan robinson gets a screen from bam out of bio but then instead of going left duncan robinson does the opposite and spins around and goes the opposite way of the screen this leaves the spurs defender completely lost which gives duncan robinson a lane to drive into the paint and when he gets at the rim he hangs in the air for a couple of seconds just so the contest isn't there anymore this play is absolutely insane but the next one gets even crazier over here duncan robinson catches the ball at the left wing and goes to Wembenyama's body but he's not getting any traction out of that play so what he does is that he makes Wemby think that he's gonna dribble out but instead he does a half spin which gets Wemby to bite which gets duncan robinson a wide open reverse layup and when we look back at what Duncan Robinson specializes in, which is the sort of JJ Redick type three-point shooting, he's excelling at this even better than he was before. Last night against the Brooklyn Nets, Duncan Robinson shot 10 three-pointers. And out of those 10, he made a whopping six three-pointers, finishing the game with 26 points and 60% three-point efficiency. Are you kidding me? Now, let me tell you what this does. This makes the Miami Heat even more potent because the last time he was shooting like this, they made it to the NBA Finals. And if you think about it a little bit harder, Jimmy Butler had 36 points that game. And why do you think he had that? Well, I know Jimmy Butler is an amazing player. He gets his buckets on his own, but Duncan Robinson is the guy spacing out the floor. So it gives room for Jimmy to even have these 1v1 opportunities. All you gotta do right now is wait till Tyler Hero comes back on the floor. And this is a recipe for success in this NBA, man. And it's funny how everybody was talking about how Duncan Robinson was overpaid, saying that he wasn't worth the money, but now he's coming out there and he's making a statement. Now we move on to the second standout player on the Miami Heat. And this is most definitely Jimmy Butler. The dude shot the three-pointer at a 40%, knocking down two big three-pointers. And the crazy thing is he scored 36 points, five rebounds, three assists, one steal, and three blocks. I told everybody in the Miami Heat video that Jimmy Butler does not give a singular shit about the regular season, and that is factual. But last night against the Brooklyn Nets, he had to remind everybody that he's still capable of averaging these 30-point nights if he wants to. And I think this season, Jimmy Butler is more focused on knocking down some more three-pointers. He's had six consecutive games where he's made a three-pointer. So taking this into consideration, let's break down some film on his three-point shooting. So on this play, guys, you see the shot clock clock is currently at three seconds so either he has to drive or chuck a three-point shot so what jimmy butler does first is he does a pump fake but after that what really works is the jab step that he does which gets his defender to bite a little bit and gives him more than enough room to shoot a three-point shot but the reason why his jab steps work is that he's so good at driving at the rim that defenders actually have to respect him on that side of things another area he excelled at against the brooklyn nets where he had 36 points was in the mid-range area and bumping his defenders in the body on this play jimmy butler has dorian finney smith in a 1v1 situation so what he does is that he drives hard to the right and hits his defender in the chest and fades away and shoots a mid-range shot he did this a lot in the playoffs and it's so important to get your defender off balance 
when you're pulling up in the mid range. And back to what I was talking about at the start when I was looking at Jimmy Butler was his jab steps, his uh, triple threat moves, and the way he does literally no dribbling to get wide open. And a very good example is on this play where Jimmy hits his defender with a jab step, then after that does a sort of shimmy move, which makes his defender think he's going to go left, but in reality, he goes right down in the baseline and dunks it home. You see what I mean? The superstars in the NBA don't dribble the ball. Think about Kobe Bryant. Think about Carmelo Anthony. Think about Kawhi Leonard. They grab the ball, they do no more than three dribbles, and they get their shot. And this is why it looks so effortless when they play. Jimmy looks like he's not even trying when he plays, and this is because he doesn't look like he's spamming a bunch of dribble moves. So now to end off the video, let's talk about the third standout player on the Miami Heat. And I'm going to break the rules here. I'm going to talk about three players real quick. So first, we got to start off with Bam Adebayo. He has been stepping up on the playmaking side of things. He had four assists, and this is very big, so you don't put all the pressure on Kyle Lowry and Jimmy Butler to get the ball moving. Even on the defensive end, the man had two steals, which is absolutely huge when you're running the ball down in transition. And the Miami Heat had a lot of transition buckets against the Nets. Bam Adebayo had 20 points, seven rebounds, four assists, two steals, and he had these 20 points at a 53% field goal efficiency. And guys, now Bam Adebayo has the old Duncan Robinson back, so he's going to be running a lot of handoffs with Duncan Robinson, thus making his assists go up a lot more. Now onto the second player, and this has to be Jacques Jr., bro. From now on, I'm going to call him JR, bro. So JR has been going absolutely crazy. Five assists, leading the whole team last night against the Nets. And it's crazy how every single year, the Miami Heat finally a player to replace they gave away Gabe Vincent and Max Struess and now they have Mr. JR here that's going absolutely insane he's getting to the point where he's playing like 33 minutes a night and Spolstra is actually trusting him so when you have trust from a coach as good as Spolstra you know that this kid's gonna be good and to end the video off let's talk about Kevin Love I know I left out Kyle Lowry and everybody else but I'm, I really apologize this whole Miami Heat team is amazing Kevin Love led the team in rebounds but most importantly, what I love about Kevin Love coming off the bench is that even with the second unit, he could sort of run the playmaking, which led to his four assists that night. Even in the playoffs, Kevin Love was throwing those full court passes. So I think this second unit will not be good without Kevin Love. And I think once again, it's very good to have a veteran on your roster. Kevin Love and Jacques Jr. are like absolutely gelling in the locker room. But let me know, guys, what do you think about this Miami Heat team? Do you think that they can sustain being top five in the Eastern Conference with all this competition now because in my opinion i think they're a top three seed but before you leave the video as i say in every single vid make sure you demolish a like button so hard till your phone stops working and hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel that's been all for your boy mubsy hoops i'll catch y'all in the next one